మనకి క్వాంటమ్ టెక్నాలజీస్ గురించి ఆ టెక్నాలజీ స్టార్ట్ చేసి స్పేస్ డిఫెన్స్ సర్వీసెస్ ఇస్తున్నారు అనిమేష్ ఆర్యన్ Okay. Okay. Good afternoon everybody. Yeah, how are things here? Like it's post lunch and I have been asked to talk to you about uh something on the aerospace. Well, uh I actually come from a non-aerospace background. Uh I run a company called Tagbed which is into quantum technologies. How many of you heard of quantum communication, quantum computing? Great. So, um this is a very auspicious day to start and uh, what i will talk to you about is that this is an upcoming technology okay quantum computing is going to be the most relevant thing uh, which can be done and all of you i think that major, majority of you are from engineering background how many of you are from engineering background okay all of you how many from electronics and computer science quite a few okay so Uh, you know while you look at different kinds of prospects and different kinds of career uh, you know uh, motivations for yourself i think what you all have to do is look at the opportunities which is being brought up by ai now artificial intelligence is known to everybody uh, but if you look at what is being done on quantum computing you will see that there is a plethora of opportunities uh, not only uh, you know we are talking about also in india because uh, there is a national quantum mission which has been set uh, by uh, uh, the government of india and there is a major impetus to see that this, this skill set can also be developed within the country so all of you who actually come from a background in electronics and communication and also computer science they have lot of things to work on uh, both from hardware side from software side how many of you have heard of quantum bit qubit great 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 so uh, i am very thankful to the organizers uh, i had a presentation unfortunately there was a, a flight delay so what i can tell you is that uh, we as a company look for very look for bright and passionate people we look for people who are you know willing to make that change and at this kalam foundation i believe that all of you somewhere have got inspired uh you know in in my early childhood i had the opportunity to you know see dr kalam right you know somewhere in in, in an auditorium like this and his words that whatever you dream has to be made into reality and you should, you know something which doesn't let you sleep this is something which all of you should get uh, you know aspired and uh, in a, in you know in this kind of an atmosphere it's very difficult to talk something on the technical points but what i can suggest you is that quantum is the technology for the decade and you have to be the you know uh, the resources because the moment you get you are educated you are you are able to understand and build the skill set in this uh, field there are plenty of opportunities just the opportunities won't won't you know you will not be able to fathom it and uh, feel free to connect with us hello yeah okay sorry so uh, what i would suggest is that try to read more about and figure out opportunities in quantum computing quantum communication feel free uh, you can get uh, uh, you know my details from uh, shri naresh garu and uh, anything where we can be of help we'll be very happy and we host lot of actually engineering people at our campus in bangalore and 
we'll be very happy if you are you know eager to know something or eager to work in this field okay i don't know it's it's post lunch and you know say so people are still getting settled so is there any question any question that you would want to uh, me to answer Can we take questions fr from the audience? Yeah, please. Any questions? It could be anything related to your career, anything that you want to build, anything to entrepreneurship. Uh, because I started my journey in in building my own startup about six years ago. So if there's anything that you want uh, to be answered, uh, you know, probably is, is someone 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 available. Very good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Yeah, what motivated you for being a young entrepreneur on this dias today? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky. So, <laughs> I call that, I never actually imagined that I will be an entrepreneur, okay? So, I come from a background in physics, and uh, the most common thing was to become a professor, right? That's the most academic and the research route. But, you know, any technology, you know, when it grows, it grows right from the labs to the commercial place, right? So there was some bit of interest that if should I attempt it, should I try? So I tried, and that's where I actually, you know, um, kind of met uh, some good people who actually helped me. So one of the things so you must always look for is good mentor. So I was mentored by good people, and somehow the opportunities clicked, okay? And it is also a matter of time. Like if you see, if someone was trying to make an application, you know, before Android, it was not a hit, right? Android brought that platform. So you must look at different kinds of technologies which get fused together, and you can see that there will be a difference. So, you know, Uber today is only because Android existed, right? Android actually brought everyone to the common platform. So similarly, when you want to try something entrepreneurship, see that how you can impact people at large. Sir, just another question. Yeah. Yeah, what are the major obstacles that you have faced in this entrepreneur, like whenever you're growing? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think major, uh, you know, when you come, when you come from a very, you know, I, I'm, you know, a very average middle class family background. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that you actually will uh, face is the lack, the, the lack of Financial fun resources. Yeah, funding, yes. So resources, right? Not only yeah. money, I'm talking about any kind of resources, yes. right? So that is something which will be a major bottleneck because that will also define what kind of risk you can take. Of course, there are technological risks, but there are also financial risks. So you, it, you have to <coughs> make a measure of that, calculate your risk, and then get into something like entrepreneurship. But today, I think the atmosphere is better. There's a lot of support, a lot of things actually are coming up. So, you know, if you are actually, and then you also need to have a lot of perseverance. Uh, you know, often people think that you start a company and then people will start pouring money into it, okay? That is not how it happens, okay? Yeah. Sir, are there any, uh, like any of your uh, lectures or like someone who's, who has supported you in growing up in this entrepreneurial uh, area? Yeah, enormous. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that I have been blessed, uh, uh, fortunately, with very good mentors some of the, whom you will also see here. So, you know, uh, they have actually, they helped, you know, in understanding how to build a business. So, it is like, you know, you, when you do not know something, you use GPS, right? Yes, sir. GPS knows how to go into that. Similarly, when you go into uncharted territory like entrepreneurship, you know, you need someone who can actually help you guide, help you understand how to go into that direction. Yeah? I hope I have answered it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Please, can you give the mic there? Hi, sir. Hi. Sir, could you explain the term about quantum, how it works, and <coughs> most of us are not familiar with the term quantum science and quantum computer? Okay, great. So, um, good, that's a very good question. See. Uh, how many of you uh, actually, you know, have heard of Moore's Law? Yes, sir. Moore's Law? Nobody? Uh, electronics and Communication, Computer Science. 
the number of transistors, the size, you know, it doubles. No, no idea about Moore's law? Okay, so what Moore's law suggests is that the number of transistors which are used in our traditional computing actually is doubles, right? And the size is becoming smaller and smaller. So today you can see your chips are, mobile chips are couple of nanometers, right? Five nanometer, four nanometer. Now this is what you call as a classical range, okay? In this range, uh, you have uh, the, the traditional physics which is used to define your gates. In quant what happens is that when you go beyond nanometer range, then your gates will not operate the way it was supposed to be. So quantum actually happens at that, at that level, when you go at the atomic range, okay? And what it does is, it gives you a different kind of computing. So prior to we had semiconductor, there were electrical circuits, you know, uh, units being used. You have heard of the machine, Enigma machine, right? Yes, sir. Right? So these, that was the first wave of computing in which you used electrical devices to do perform calculations. Then came semiconductors, which actually could do something way faster in a very small size. This is the third wave of computing, which can solve problems which someone thought was unimaginable. So quantum computing basically is a, is a field which uses principles of quantum physics to give you, to, you know, to, for computational activities, okay? So that it is, it is this is, I'm telling in a, in, a, in a nutshell, but you know, there are different kinds of, I mean, you know, you have to know about a lot of things about quantum, uh, you know, entanglement, quantum physics. So imagine today, if you hit a football to any of these walls here, you expect it to come back, right? That is how your traditional computers work. Now imagine if you're supposed to hit that football and it could just cross to the other side. If you have seen some of the movies of, uh, you know, uh, some movies from uh, Avengers or something, uh, you know, yes, uh, and when you would have seen, what it says is something called as a quantum tunneling, which yes. means that your gates will not perform the way it is. Objects can cross over without, you know, uh, physically destroying that particular thing. So this is, you know, the, it uses some principles of quantum physics and it gives you immense benefits because it is about uh, whatever you thought would take million years can actually be solved in a couple of hours. So that's why almost all tech companies are working on uh, quantum computing, quantum technologies. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Any further questions? Any further questions? Oh, please. Please, can you just pass on? Can you please pass on the mic? Good afternoon, sir. Hmm. Sir, it's me, Chaya Mishra from Methodist College of Engineering and Technology. Sir, oh. this side. Oh, this side. Sorry. This sorry. side. You're right. Sir, this side. Oh, okay, okay, I, okay. Sir, actually, being a young, successful man, but not being only to yourself, but to the society, you're a very successful man. Uh -huh. And as a young age, see, actually, we all know what to do, what not to do, what are right and wrong. <coughs> but as a young man, due to the distraction of world, the world is full of distractions as well as the achievement. But what made you to be attracted always towards the achievement? How did you may overcome the distractions of the world, especially in the today's world and in today's generation and today's young's life? Yes, so see, this is, I would say, a problem with everything that you undertake. If you take up engineering, you will have a lot of distraction. You take up medical, there'll be a lot of other problems. So I think that if you are sure about, or at least, you know, sincere about what you want to achieve, you will figure out a way. Like it is, I won't claim that, you know, I have mastered the art of, you know, getting things together. But what motivates you to, you know, wake up and come to the college? What motivates you to, you know, get up and run your startup, right? I think once you are able to figure out that this is why I'm doing it, once you're, you're clear of your basics, then no one else has to tell you that you must go to the college on time or you must attend the lectures, you, because eventually you are expecting something, right? You want to achieve something. Now in order to you, for you to reach there, no one is going to come and push you. Maybe till some extent parents do, some extent teachers do, but eventually, even if someone offers you a plate, a breakfast plate, eventually you will have to eat. 
So if your motivation is that I want to do something, I think eventually things will, you know, gear up and get aligned. So I don't, I mean, you know, it, and it is, it's also a process. It is not like today you start and today you have mastered. You know that these are distractions, you know, you can't get away, you can't live in the forest today, right? So even forest will have mobile connections. So, so I think you have to figure out that how do you want to go? And I think people, people figure out. I, it is not something that, you know, you, you have to be aligned in that uh, area. You have to be aligned with your objectives and you have to take a stock of your objectives. Am I going in the right path? Because if you keep some milestones, you know that you're going in the right path or not, or do you need any course correction? Yeah? Yes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Sir. Thank you. I think, is, is it okay? Or can I take one more question? Any, any, any more question? Please, please. Can you get the mic here? Good sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, an entrepreneur has <coughs> in, uh, like a, uh, one can take risk at, at any time, no? Like what made you to take a risk at your uh, uh, graduation time? You're having to take internship and everything, no? Yeah. What made you to think of like getting into a, a entrepreneurship? No, no, first I did not get into entrepreneurship in my graduation, okay? So I did my graduation, post-graduation, and then I was pursuing my research in Singapore. So it was during that time I figured out that there are some opportunities available and I wanted to give a shot, okay? The second thing which you mentioned is, uh, it's not about you should just drop everything and do. It is often that you will have to make a decision, right? What you want to pursue. So I started this journey right from, you know, uh, I mean, from Vizag actually. So there was some program which was launched. I started my journey from Vizag. And slowly, you know, some opportunities kept on growing, you know, it kept on growing. And it is not like someone has to decide that I will only do in graduation. But you also know, if you could run 10 kilometers today, five years, 10 years later, you won't be able to run, right? So you also have your own liabilities, responsibilities, and duties, right? So it is a personal choice everyone has to make, you know, what they want. Uh, but if you want to be doing that, it is it is good that you know that you are able to take early risk. You will not be able to able to take that risk if you have a family and all, because there will be a lot of financial, you know, duties you need to fulfill. So, it was not that I wanted only to. As I said, I, I never planned to be an entrepreneur. So it is only that you know something came up together, and that's how I became an entrepreneur. So it was not something that I always thought that I dreamt of becoming an entrepreneur. No, that's not true. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, please, Sir, please. Did you take risk at the time of demand or did you start uh, earlier? <coughs> so what you are actually referring to is that, did you do any market survey yes, before? Sir. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, you, anyone who wants to get into business, who wants to get into any kind of uh, startup or trying to do something, not only has to understand the technology, but also has to understand where, where is your market? Who are the guys who want your product, right? I was telling this in my previous question that you have to figure out who your customer is and how big your customer is and there are a lot of other metrics as well, right? And that is important for you to, you, of course you don't want to build something which you only keep in your home, right? You but sir, huh? like, uh, the strategy of the market and customers changes day by day. Correct. But we can't estimate, it's uncertainty, you know. How yes. can we take a risk at the time of demand? <coughs> and how can we ensure that our product goes into the market and we get the 100% of the pro profit? Okay. We can't estimate, no? No, no, no. So therefore, this is not a static approach. It's a dynamic approach. First, the, 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 the second part uh, to your question is, no, it is not true. Sometimes some technologies come which we may even not need, right? Some technologies demands are created, right? It's like, look at this uh, new applications, quick deliveries, right? 10 minute delivery. Now this was not really uh, like, you know, everyone was dying that I need to have this. But it also gave you that comfort that if you want anything at any point of time, 
So there are also, in, you know, people, there is also a market which is induced and there is a market where there is a need which already exists. You often have to do some kind of a fitting to ensure that, you know, you are able to uh, deliver your product and build your, you know, business. So it is not a static approach. It is not like I, today I saw, tomorrow if something changes, you may have to do a course correction. We all have done that. Okay? So uh, we also thought that this idea will click, but then we thought that, okay, but no one will be able to use it. So then we have to junk that idea. So you have to also be comfortable <coughs> and, and uh, you know, um, open to junking some ideas that now this doesn't work because the situation has changed. So it is not like you started with something and you will keep on doing that no matter what happens. For some technologies, like you look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk wanted to have reusable rockets. Everyone said, it is wrong. It is not correct. Uh, you know, no one will ever do it. But then he did it in 10 years, right? So that's a disruptive market, okay? And then there are some markets where things existed. People knew that uh, machine learning is being used, AI will come up, Gen AI did come up, right? So there are different kinds of business. It depends on what exactly is your idea, what exactly is your business model, and then the strategy will be around that kind of a thing. Sir, whether we can't say our product gives the optimal usage to the, pro to the customers, no? Hmm. How, what made you to sell your product into the market to hmm. make it optimal usage to the customers? No, it is not optimal. See, as I said, see, you will be selling two things. Either you are solving a pain point, which we call as, it's a paracetamol. You are solving a pain. Or, you are, it is a vitamin. You are enabling something better. Right? So, it depends. So, it depends at what exactly. We were looking, we, had, we developed security products. Like, how your data can be secure. Using quantum, com uh, you know, uh, technologies. So, we saw that this is, there is a market and we, 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 we can actually build something on that. And we delivered it. Similarly, the strategies could be different. Like today, you, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of um, uh, this application, which can give you some instant videos using AI, right? Now, Gen AI has come. Now, people are using that to develop codes. Yeah? develop codes and build their markets. So it is, it is like, you know, using AI to build something more better. So it, you de it depends on you, you know, how you can actually make things. Yeah? But sir, an entrepreneur has the probability whether their product clicks or not. Time comes, the product clicks. How about like if the time doesn't come and the product doesn't click? They're, they had made the groundwork a lot, but it doesn't click, no? How about like taking risk at that time? You know, see, your questions are more intricate and it will not be answered like this. So, you know, you can connect and, you know, these questions, there are ways to handle all of that. There are ways to handle your IP, your, your products, how can you take precautions, how much to expose, all of that can be done. Okay? Yeah? Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Guys, guys, big round of. Are either of the Tariq Idigadra, either of the Lunaru, Bengalur Nunchachir Sarago, Inca Conjangatiga. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Anime Sharanji.